So we have three different types of tubing. So that all comes down to how we get things from outside the bioreactor sterilely inside of our bioreactor. One is clear, and that's like what we saw over at the pumps before. That's very easy to pump on. But what it's not is an easy way to connect to things that are from outside the bioreactor. We have both the clear and the white tubing, which is what we call weldable. I can walk up a bottle that also has weldable tubing, heat them up, seal them together, and then I can necessarily deliver nutrients, base, things like that to my cells without worrying about contaminating the reactor. So you can splice things directly on the fly. Correct. So we have the filters on the end of everything. Each one's a 0.2 micron filter with the idea that you're gonna be able to keep bacteria and fungus outside of the reactor while keeping all of your cell culture protected inside the bioreactor. So this bottle is basically our protection device. If you're getting a culture that's overflowing, it goes up the condenser and eventually will come out. So if it overflows, it has a long path to come down, it's gonna drain by gravity, and it's gonna get trapped, trapped in here, here, protecting your filter on your effluent stream. We have two main filters for delivering of oxygen, one through the bottom down to the sparger, and one through the top. This is what we call our overlay. So this actually lets us be able to gas exchange across the surface area of the top of the culture. So that's also part of the computational fluid dynamics and our ability to deliver oxygen and to strip carbon dioxide. So the only thing we're missing is still the pH and dissolved oxygen probes. And once we have that inside this reactor, that's going to be completely sealed off and can be taken You're ready to go. Ready well, to let's go, go take a look at those probes. So we typically use just a pH and a dissolved oxygen probe. So the pH probe is just a very traditional pH probe here. Yeah, I can see the liquid and the extra electrodes inside. Yep, and you can see the position where the gel stops as well. So what you've got here is electro connections on top, which goes into the control box, and that's how it connects its measurement from the bottom foot. Okay. Second probe is the dissolved oxygen probe. This one's a little bit more interesting because you can actually take it apart. Unscrews at its base. What you see then is an actual sensor. I see, so this is where it actually measures the oxygen. Exactly. And when it goes through, it goes through a basically just a little membrane at the base of, the, of the, the stainless steel housing. Okay. And across that surface is how we're actually being able to measure oxygen dissolved in liquids. Okay. And so then you would take both of these two probes, put them into the reactor, and that whole system we would go and sterilize. Exactly. So these are the last two missing parts that just have to be put into the reactor. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how we actually set up the system to go. So actually operating the system requires a control tower. The control tower will have things like your motor, your temperature probe that you'll actually have to insert as well, which does not go through the autoclave, as well as your electro connections to your pH and your dissolved oxygen probe. All those sensors will go back to a computer where you'll have a set point and something that will respond to that set point. So once the cells are in there, you've got all your control loops running, and you have to come back periodically to, to monitor them and make sure that it's going according to plan. Well, Alan, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today and to show us how you build one of these systems. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm happy to be helping here to help. Thanks, Alan. Thank <laughs> you.